it is a big question whether the added time that it's taking for us to get to 12.4, does that impact how much longer it's going to take us to get to 12.5 or not? Let's start with the news of 12.4. We've been waiting for this. Now we know that it's now being rolled out to employees. We don't know yet all of employees. Uh, when we're now filming this today, we had assumed that by now we would actually see this rolled out wide release. That hasn't happened. So later we'll talk about whether or not we're still on the March of Nines. This is a person who uh, shared the screenshot of FSC 12.4. This did not come from either of these uh, users on X. Uh, we don't know exactly who it came from, but I can't wait to try the new vision-based attention monitoring. You can see that this is the actual uh, screenshot that this employee had in his car. FSC upgrades the city streets, driving stack to a single end-to-end -end neural net, trained on millions of video clips. Uh, that's the same conversation we had before. So the question is, if 12.4 is late, we're not in the March of Nines, why? Then time is being spent in regressions or inferior performance, which by nature is unpredictable and does not indicate rapidly increasing repeatable gains in reliability. Let's talk about that. But before we get there, let's go ahead and show some of the video that we uh, had here. This is the person showing that they actually have 12.4 in their, uh, you know, their car, that they're selecting it, that it's available there. And then I also have taken their 30 minute video and I did it four times. So while I'm playing this, why don't you explain um, what you're thinking is happening with 12.4? So the it's interesting because Elon had said that we were supposed to get this already, you know, a week and some change ago. And it's taking a little bit longer to roll out to customers and for him, for it to be close enough to where he thought it was going to roll out inside of a week, but then to have this um, pause basically means that there was something that showed up in the very last stage of the QA process for 12.4 that basically either he just was personally unaware of it or that the team um, didn't anticipate. And so that's what I think Wes is referring to. And for people who don't know, um, Wes is a former project manager for Tesla Autopilot. And so he does have some context to have some insight here and some understanding of how all of this works from the inside of Tesla in the past um, that should give him an ability to, to make good analysis and um, have good insight here. So anyways, what he's saying is that the fact that we are running into unknown, unknown unknowns and because we don't know what they are and we can't plan for them, we don't know how long they're going to take to fix. And all of that means that we're not making consistent, repeatable gains that allow us to say, hey, yes, by the end of the summer, we should be on, we'll say 12.8 or whatever. Um, <clears throat> just because we don't know how long it's going to take. And it is a big question whether the added time that it's taking for us to get to 12.4, does that impact how much longer it's going to take us to get to 12.5 or not? Is 12.5's development on an independent quality assurance validation process or is its validation process dependent on 12.4? We really don't know what the answer to that question is yet. And since we don't know, then it's hard to say with confidence that, yes, we are kind of in this 10 times. You know, we talked about this, I think, last week or the week before that 12.4 is supposed to be 10 times less miles per intervention than 12.3. And if that was going to be the case, why is it taking so long to roll out? This is kind of strange. Um, so now we've got some question marks that are introduced around whether that is or is not true. Um, apparently where, however it's breaking, it's breaking kind of in a new and novel way. And that's really somewhat to be expected in the way that these neural nets are trained from end to end with new set of data that it probably is going to, like whatever is going to cause you issues is very likely to be something new. It's not going to be the same problem that you had before because the training set is new. And the hardware that you're using to train it now is a larger um, training cluster. And so the issues that are going to be kind of uh, baked into the neural net somewhere 
are going to move. They're not going to stay in the same place and therefore be solved by the exact same things. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at. I think that it's exciting still to see that, hey, 12.4 is in the hands of employees. Um, and it's one of those things that if we see it roll out to customers sometime here in this week and the delay was only a week long, well, then it seems like probably a minor hiccup. If it takes us more than seven days from now again to get this into the hands of customers, then it starts to look like maybe a little bit bigger issue. Um, so it's, you know, one of those scenarios where we are on, you know, I would kind of disagree with Wes in saying that we're not on an exponential progress. Uh, we just don't know, like exponentials are hard to predict because you've got two different variables going on. First, like what is the magnitude of the exponential that you're on? You know, is it a squared? Is it a cubed? Is it a um, quintupled? Or because that will have a large impact on the rate of progress. But then the other thing is, where are you at on that curve? Because if you're at the bottom of the curve versus only a few steps forward, that makes a large amount of difference as well. Um, and so it's just difficult to, to predict exactly what the rate of progress will be moving forward because you don't know the status of all of those things. Um, but it does seem like the release cadence is putting us on an early exponential path. And so the question is just how much longer do we have to keep solving some issues before we get into the really, really rapid part of the exponential? Right. It's maybe delayed by a few days, by a week. But when we're looking at this video here, this is a 30 minute video and I just sped it up by four times and it was perfect. It drove incredibly well. This is the only video we've seen of 12.4 out there. Um, but you have a, don't you speak to another uh, employee? Yeah, I have a, with, with that? Yeah. Yeah, a separate piece of anecdotal evidence and it is, it's secondhand. So I don't know this employee directly, but I know someone who knows someone who has 12.4 in their car and they were driving around in a major metropolitan area last week. And I think they drove over an hour with zero input to the car from them. They did not touch the steering wheel. They did not touch the accelerator. They did not touch the brakes. FSD drove them from their parking spot to all through town and then to their destination and parked. And the vision only driver monitoring system worked uh, so well that, yeah, they didn't even have to do any of the, you know, zero nags, zero steering wheel touches to make sure that, you know, he was paying attention. And so that's, you know, multiple points of data that say when it works correctly, that it can work very well and be, you know, I think that driver nag thing, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that's one of the main issues and complaints that customers have right now is that the nag was getting to be very frustrating and making the system feel much less convenient to use. And so if this really makes a huge step forward in solving, even if it was just most of the time, like if you were moved 90%, of those nags, like that would be big. Um, but to potentially remove 100% of the nags, that is really, you know, a huge step forward. And so to see that system already in place and appearing to work, um, that that's a big data point. If they are having a setback in rolling out 12.4, but we see that 12.4 is a large leap forward in functionality, it makes it a little bit more excusable. It's like if 12.4 didn't get us anything extra hardly and they were having issues, well, that would feel like the progress is not very meaningful. But if you are slowing down a little bit, but it's still a big step forward, then you're still a big step forward. Yeah, that's exactly the point. And if it's good so far, anecdotal from your friend, anecdotal from this one video that we saw of the employee, it's looking like it's really good. I'm going to play the video of the auto park of 12.4 and people are saying that it's still very slow. It's, you know, it's the same as what we have now with 12.3s and 12.2s even. Um, what did you see this and have any comment about 
this auto park feature? I hadn't seen this clip specifically, um, but it is good to see what appears to be vision only auto park working correctly. I think this is going to be one where we, we have to see lots of people put it through yeah. lots of different parking scenarios to really get a gauge on whether or not it works as well as the former versions did. But obviously like that's the end state. It will be able to do those things. I'm highly confident of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, there's nothing new with this. We've already seen auto park. It's all about, you know, banish you know, letting it drive through. We didn't see that quite at this point. And we don't know yet if 12.4 actually has banish and uh, summon. In in a previous tweet that Elon sent out, he actually did say that it will show up in 12.4. We've not seen it. We have not seen it in the code here, in the screenshots that this uh, employee shared. He just talked about um, that is vision-based monitoring now and you know, 12.4. He didn't say, they didn't say anything about the, these two new features. So that one, I'm a little bit, um, you know, I'll be a little disappointed if, if those two don't show up. So we'll see about that. But definitely by 12.5. Yeah, I would hope to right. see those. It, it seems like actually Smart Summon is one of those two weeks things that, <laughs> Yeah. It's been two weeks for only about two years now that we were supposed to get actually Smart Summon. Actually Smart Summon, yeah. It's taken forever. Which is curious why, right? Because they even showed, uh, Ashra Kalaswamy did a whole demo on it saying how the, you know, Ego, the car can actually plan and actually can see the whole parking lot and it, how it took, it used to take forever to get to the spot. Then it figured it out planning and it figured out how to do it in one shot kind of thing. They already showed that a year ago. So, okay. Um, yeah. My guess is they must have, you know, it's one of those problems. It's probably like 90% there, 90% left to go. Mm, that yeah. they had made huge progress and it felt like they were almost there. But then that almost there portion seems like it's almost impossible to solve. Um, and I think it's all a function of planning. That getting the planning side, like it's not the perception side of the stack that needs work to finish where they are now all the way to get to actually smart summon. And I think that's where, as long as we anticipate that there's going to be continued progress in the ability of artificial intelligence as a field in general to be able to reason and plan, then it will be solved. Like the, we can always come back to the proof case that humans are able to do this planning with our neural nets and our eyes. <laughs> Therefore, a digital neural net is capable of doing the same planning combined with vision. It's just how, you know, how long? We don't know yet. We'll wait two weeks. <laughs> we'll see. So this is the news um, from China. This uh, Chris Zhang, he's a very credible follow on X. And he said, I can confirm that since the spring update, uh, some Tesla China employees' cars have had the words employee FSD beta program registered on them, but no features can be enabled yet. But there's words right on the employees' cars. So this is, um, you know, after a recent update, Chinese employee vehicles displayed wording connected to the employee FSD beta program. The vehicle displayed settings related to being involved in multiple initial beta groups, including employee wave one plan registered. So despite the appearance of related settings, vehicles haven't enabled any of the features yet, including those linked to multiple initial beta groups. You know, the recent government barriers have been released. So it looks like that we're headed in this direction. Um, you know, this is good news, right? We're seeing it actually in cars in China, FSD beta. Thoughts on that? Yeah, it seems like clear indication that Tesla is planning to release yeah. this soon in China. And that, of course, you know, to do that, they have to have their entire QA process set up in China. And I think we'll find out whenever the first employees do start to get their waves. Um, but they're just laying the groundwork of and deciding, OK, who's in wave one? Who's in wave two? You know, how are we going to QA our China specific version of FSD once it gets there? Because we can't just roll it directly out from the U.S.-based version to Chinese customers 
without having it go through its own separate validation process. And so this is them preparing that validation process. That said, obviously they haven't got all of the approvals, either they haven't got all the approvals necessary, or you know, the other possibility is that the China specific version of FSD just is not ready yet. It could be either one of those two scenarios and we don't know. Um, but just because they have made all these preparations is not a guarantee that they will be able to do anything with this soon. We just kind of have to wait and see on that. 